So, um, I usually have been sending the questions, but I don't think I did. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, my questions are really just to kind of get people warmed up. So, people in the audience, if you have any questions brewing, um, we'll go to you soon. So, um, first of all, um, to whoever wants to start to answer it, um, how do you see the relationship between arts and activism? Anyone? Anyone? I'll go. <laughs> uh, I think, I guess we're probably looking at it tonight in the context of feminism and kind of gender and sex related activism. Um, and I think I said something similar last time I was here, so sorry for the repeat material. Um, I think that sometimes it's explicit. But more often than not, it's kind of implicit. So I think um, being someone who's not a man, um, standing on the stage and being quite loud, um, is still <laughs> surprisingly controversial in this day and age. And I think even if you're a musician or an artist who's not using the word feminist for whatever reason, uh, you're, what you're doing is still a feminist act because it's kind of disruptive in that way. Um, yeah, anyone want to add to that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and I think um, obviously arts and activism are very closely related and a lot of people use their art to sort of promote their values and their message. I, I do think there is a danger of, well not just in the arts but generally of, of being in an echo chamber and I do think a lot of people do sort of activist poems in roomfuls of people that entirely agree with them <laughs> and I think sometimes that, that's sometimes you need that sometimes you need you know particularly in the moment it's such a depressing time that sometimes I think you need to be surrounded by like-minded people but I think sometimes I'm not sure how how much you promote activism by only giving the message to people who already know the message, if you know what I mean. So I think, I think it is, it, I think there, is a, there is a great danger in, in sort of, and also, um, this, I think I've got a couple of friends who are sort of, not exactly, we're a little bit right, right, well not in, not in the Nigel Farage kind of way, but they're not, they're not sort of card carrying Labour members. And I think sometimes there is this idea that, that um, being left wing is compulsory if you're in the arts, and I think I think sometimes you you just got to be aware that not everybody thinks like you do. So, you know. yeah. Um, yeah, that's um, interesting stuff. Um, I'm actually I've been writing an essay um, for a book that's not going to come out until like, next year sometime, um, but it's about um, specifically um, like feminism in spoken word events, so I kind of touch on, on some of that stuff. Um, so the next question is, what are some current issues based around gender that you're thinking about at the moment? Transphobes go home, <laughs> wrath follows pride. <laughs> also, um, I'm thinking a lot about inclusivity and exclusionists within the LGBT community, or as uh, it sometimes feels the mostly cisgendered GL on weekends and isn't BT a phone company community. Yeah, I mean, I just, um, obviously as sort of an older woman as well, I do think, I sometimes, I'm sort of slightly nerdy woman, I do, I mean, I do think it's very important that um, gender in sp well, spoken word is, I mean, I know some, not this one, this is a fantastic moment, I know I have gone to some women's nights where there are women, yeah, but only if you're a particular kind of sort of young, hipster, very trendy woman, <laughs> and I think, so I think it is really important that all women's voices are. Um, so, with that, I'd like to ask for some questions from the audience. So, um, it doesn't have to be kind of related to um, what I've been talking about already. Um, if you have any sort of questions just about the artists themselves and their experience 
um, within what they do. Um, I think often the most interesting kinds of inspiration for me come from places which are not music. Um, so I love music, I work in music for my sort of full-time job alongside doing it performance-wise as a hobby. Um, but I love looking to literature and the news and to random things people say and visual arts and kind of all sorts of random crap um, <laughs> as well as uh, especially kind of I think looking to genres which are not similar to the ones that I'm working in so um, I guess I make kind of old pop kind of stuff but I love mm -hmm. classical music um, I've been working recently uh, do music PR for my kind of day job we've been doing lots of jazz stuff um, I think if you can kind of be like a magpie, like leaning lots of little bits from seemingly disconnected places, you'll end up with something more interesting than if you look at people who are doing something similar to you already. Um, yeah, anyone else? I'm going through a moment of lifetime of uh, looking to kind of Victorian and Edwardian um, literature and sort of updating it to today's world to something that is relevant to us in a way that perhaps artists could not that explicitly do back then. Thank you, St. Oscar. And to bring sort of, you know H.P. Lovecraft? Any Lovecraft fans in this room? No? He's the one who wrote all the Monster Cthulhu stuff back in the early 20th. So he was an utterly despicable human being. Um, whatever you do, don't Google what he named his cat. It was bad. Um, and I love nothing more than to think that here I am, someone who's unapologetically myself and queer, and writing stuff inspired by him to an ideology within an ideology that he hates and also Shape of Water read Shadow over Innsmouth and think about how much he's turning his grave, I love that I definitely want to Google that now <laughs> <laughs> um, Anything else? Um, any questions? Yeah, I'll ask one I uh, really love the comment um, that you made about being a woman standing up and actually saying something in front of a group of people can sometimes be political in itself. Bearing that in mind, I thought I'd ask you what you thought made a piece of art a feminist piece of art. Uh, what is a feminist piece of art to you? Mm -hmm. Question. Who wants to go for it? <laughs> it's kind of an impossible question. Um, I think, to kind of recap what I already said, I think that um, it's perhaps a bit of a cop out, but I think whenever women make art, whenever people who are not men make art, um, there is a kind of feminist context to it, but how much that's kind of determined by um, whether or not the artist sort of thinks about that context and how much that's determined by the people who are looking at it and receiving it. Um, I'm not really sure that's kind of a big old theory question. Um, I suppose I'm trying to think about what makes um, a piece of art kind of feel significant in a feminist way to me and I guess I would think about particularly um, people, not specifically women, but people who have made art um, that speak to um, a part of the female experience that is not often voiced. Um, so in terms of music, um, I really love Tori Amos um, in that regard. I think she did some really cool stuff in terms of thinking about kind of sexual assault and making that topic of popular music in a way that I don't think it has massively been before. Um, so I think kind of 
speaking what has previously not been spoken. Uh, it something looks like a hallmark of feminist art for me. But yeah, but I think it's kind of an impossible question because, yeah, it's subjective. Anyone else? feminist has gotten weirdly loaded lately with some people, hasn't it? Like, it's, it implies something beyond believing in the right of female and assigned female people being human beings, and it just shocks me that it's controversial. Like, you know what I mean? With people. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of making me think of my essay that I wrote because before I tackled the subject I had to be like well what is feminism anyway and then I could only say what it was to me because it does mean lots of different things to different people and I had to approach it from well this this is what I mean but you know um, it, was, it does get quite complicated but um, and at the same time there are um, yeah like musicians like um, I'm pretty sure PJ Harvey said she's not a feminist but so many of her songs are so feminist that I just find that really surprising um, any more questions yeah um, can you hear me is that fine yeah I don't usually <laughs> move the mic around I don't know what I start doing <laughs> it's kind of building on what you said about um, just standing there in itself as a feminist statement and doing what you do as a feminist statement um, and I just had a question about how how do you push past when you write about something personal or uh, painful? How do you push past that fear of sharing it to bring it here, like you guys have today? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a boring answer, but I think it's just habits and practice, and um, like lots of things in life. Um, so yeah, I do still feel some fear and shame connected with kind of sharing stuff with people. Um, it's not necessarily connected with how personal the thing feels, but I think just uh, kind of standing up and doing something a bit weird and loud is inherently kind of a scary thing to do. Um, but I think getting from the stage of being too scared to do it versus it just kind of feeling normal and like a job and like, you know, something you enjoy, it basically is just practice. So I think you kind of build up um, and also kind of acceptance that it doesn't always go well. Like sometimes you'll play a gig um, and it will be rubbish and you'll get heckled. And <laughs> kind of <coughs> learning to feel that fear and knowing that it's not really going to hurt you in the long term. And I think kind of looking to other people who are doing it as well, which I think is why stuff like this is cool. So kind of being with your peers who are doing it and looking to um, you know, other people you can relate to who are maybe at a kind of slightly later stage of their career uh, and, you know, seeing the reactions that they've had, which doubtless are not always positive, um, kind of helps with the fear of, you know, receiving less than positive reaction yourself. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it's kind of a big question about kind of where the fear lies and where it's coming from. But, yeah, I think it's, I think it's habit. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, I actually find some of my most personal poems, people say, well, how can you share that? But actually, I've found it so, so therapeutic, Jeremy. I think, I think, um, I think that there is, it, it does, it's quite hard when you're sharing something which is very personal and which is by some very painful to you, because you do get very, very sensitive to audience reactions as well. I mean, fortunately, in spoken word, I think audiences generally are incredibly supportive, but I must admit, if someone's sort of checking their phone or goes out to the loo in the middle of a poem, which is, is very personal, it, it hurts more than if it's sort of, I don't know, a funny poem about teddy bears, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, and but the other thing is, I think, the more personal um, I get, the more I shroud it in metaphor as well. I think that, that does help as well. It kind of, it kind of gives you that, that sort of distancing. So you're putting it out there, but you are kind of protecting yourself a bit. Yeah. Give a man a mask and he'll tell you the truth, darling. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that question. I really, yeah, really enjoyed that. Um, any other questions, or we can move on to the open mic if not? No? Okay, well, thank you for being here.
Okay.